When it comes to crypto, the first word you usually stumble upon is Bitcoin, the second being blockchain. Crypto enthusiasts sing the praises of this technology, but what the hell does blockchain actually mean? What makes it so unique and what's making it so revolutionary? Moreover, what problems does it solve? Hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna have an understanding of the concept of the blockchain and how it is used in applications in the crypto world today. If you Google the word blockchain right now, the definition on the first couple of websites will sound a little something like this. It is a decentralized distributed ledger that records the provenance of a digital asset. Well, that helped. I believe that for you to truly understand what blockchain technologies are, you need to know why they have even appeared and what problems they're actually trying to solve, not just the technical specs. Take a look at this, it's, it's a hundred dollar bill. How can we tell that this is real or fake? Of course, we can look at its visual properties, we can feel the material of the bill, look for the watermarks, the color of the glow. The way to know for sure is to check the serial number. This number is recorded by the bank. It is a record that shows that this bill is real and I can actually go to the store and purchase something with it without getting into trouble with the law. To know if a bill is fake or legit, we need to turn to the records of the state's financial authority. In the case of this one, $100 bill is the Fed, the Federal Reserve of the United States. Now this approach can be described as centralized. There is a singular authority that has the power to verify if something is fake or legit. As you can see, the key feature of any centralized system is trust. You take your bank's word that that bill is real. The question of whether we should trust any central authority is simply a rhetorical one. However, history has shown that any power concentrated in the hands of one person, organization, or institution tends to lead to corruption and fraud. Actually, that is why the first cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, was created. It was a response to the 2008 crisis when many economists accused the Fed of manipulating the interest rates which led to the housing bubble and triggered one of the worst and most drastic financial crises and recessions in recent history. In this perspective, blockchain's main goal was to eliminate the power of any central authority to minimize the risk of corruption and fraud. So now that you know what the problems of traditional finance that the blockchain is trying to solve or at least were designed to solve in the past, it's now time to define what this fancy word actually means. In a nutshell, blockchain is a record of information. It's like a book where you keep all of the data you need. However, unlike traditional systems, it doesn't rely on any central authority. On the contrary, it duplicates and distributes all of the data across the entire network of computers in the system. The information is stored in a form which we call blocks, which together form a chain of blocks, the blockchain. Blockchain technology was first implemented in Bitcoin's network. It was the first system that removes the need for any central authority. The records about the transaction are all kept on computers of all of the systems. You already understand the basic concepts of a blockchain. It's a chain of blocks. It is a decentralized system of records distributed among all of the participants within the network. So now let's discuss the key features that make blockchain a technology of the future. The first essential element of blockchain is cryptography. Simply put, it is a method of protecting information and communications through the use of codes. Only those for whom the information is intended can actually read and process it. This allows to verify information stored in the blockchain while also protecting it from tampering from the outside. And it sounds quite complicated, but let's use the example of Bitcoin to make the matter more clear. Each new block in the Bitcoin's network contains not only information about this transaction that you're sending, the recent transaction, but all of the transactions ever made on the entire Bitcoin network. You were probably thinking, how is it even possible to store information about all the transactions in each block? Well, this is actually achieved by a thing called hashing. In a nutshell, it is the process of converting an input of any length into an output of a fixed length. All transactions in the Bitcoin's network are taken as an input. They are then run through a hashing algorithm to return an output of a 256-bit string. As a result, each block in the Bitcoin contains records of all recent transactions. And the reason cryptography is so important for blockchain is that it protects the system from being tampered with from the outside. You can simply, you simply cannot change the information in one block. You would have to do the same on all blocks across all nodes. And this is what makes cryptocurrency so secure. It is extremely hard to alter the information in the blockchain. 
The next key feature of a blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer system. As I've already mentioned that blockchain is decentralized. There is no central authority that controls the operations in the system. So let's look at how a transaction in a Bitcoin network will look like compared to that of one in a traditional finance. So here's Alice and she wants to send 100 bucks to Bob via wire transfer. So she opens her bank's app, indicates the amount for what she wants to transfer, 100 bucks, and she just presses send. Pretty easy. But here is what happens behind the scenes. The bank, aka the central authority, receives her request and processes it, and then sends the $100 to Bob's account. Thanks to blockchain technologies, there is no need for this middleman. When Alice wants to send a Bitcoin to Bob, the transaction will be direct between the sender and the recipient. There is no middleman, but we now face another issue. How are transactions verified on the blockchain? chain if there is no central authority and how can we trust it? This question leads to the third key feature, consensus. Naturally, to add a new block to the blockchain, we need to agree on how to do that. That is why a blockchain makes use of a consensus algorithm to actually ensure that everyone operates according to the same set of rules. Bitcoin's network in particular uses an algorithm called proof of work. It essentially means that in order to add a new block to the blockchain, a participant also called a node needs to solve a complex mathematical problem. The first one to solve this problem gets to add a new block to the blockchain. And in the case of BTC, such participants are called miners. They verify the transactions in the blockchain by solving these complex mathematical problems and get a reward for it. I mentioned the word reward and it's the fourth key feature of a blockchain. It's all about incentivization. Since anyone can participate in the blockchain's network, we will stumble upon a few bad apples, of course. A few bad nodes that want to tamper with the data for their own benefit. That is why blockchain implements a reward system. If a node follows the rules, it gets a reward. If on the other hand, it tries to break the rules, it gets punished. In a Bitcoin's blockchain, miners verify the transaction and get a reward in the form of cherished Bitcoins. This overall approach makes sure that it is in everyone's best interest to follow the rules and keep consensus, which contributes to the correct functioning of the system holistically as a whole. We have covered all of the basics on blockchain technology, so now let's do a quick recap just to look at what we have learned today. First, blockchain is a decentralized record of information distributed across all the computers of the network. Also, it was first implemented in the Bitcoin network as a response to the problems of the traditional finance and centralized systems of old. Third, blockchain mainly and has to use cryptography to secure and protect information from outside tampering. Fourth, blockchain is peer-to-peer -peer system, meaning there is no middleman. And finally, but not least, blockchain implements consensus algorithms and a reward system for the correct functioning of the system to make sure all participants are working towards the same goal. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you learned a lot about blockchains, the underlying technology, and why we would need to use it for the future. If you're interested in learning more about cryptocurrency, please consider subscribing and hit notification bell. This was Shad for Exmo Crypto Exchange. Thank you for watching.